Here I've saved all the files from Jupyter Grade and put them in a folder that I've called Aquarium Pictures. We're going to need all of them. A quick way to open a file inside of Photoshop is to right click on it and find where it says Open With and Photoshop will be one of your options. But basically in this assignment we're going to be opening all of these pictures of the individual fish and we're going to be selecting them and then cutting them out of the original pictures and placing them inside this aquarium picture. Once we've placed them in there we're actually going to change their colors a little bit to make them look like they actually belong. And finally we're going to do a little bit of Photoshop magic to make it look like the fish are swimming behind certain aspects of the reef. And basically the first step is to open each fish picture and find a way to get that fish selected apart from its background. And there are several different tools that we've already covered that you could use. For example, if I have a straight black background like this, the magic wand tool immediately comes to mind. Because with the magic wand tool, I could select the, back, the black background. And actually, I think I'll turn this tolerance up a bit to 10. All right, let's try 15. It's a little bit better. And I basically have the fish selected. At this point, actually that's not true. I don't have the fish selected. I have the black background selected. So I would need to go up to select and invert that selection. For other fish, it might make more sense to use the quick selection tool or some of the marquee selection tools. However, in the next part of this video, I'm going to show you another way uh, to go ahead and quickly select things and fine tune a selection. At this point, you can either open up all of the fish and the background, or you can just open up each fish as you require it. I want to go over some of the more fine tuned controls that you can do when selecting something. I'm currently using the quick mask, I'm sorry, the quick selection tool. And you see, I've got most of the fish selected, but there are some things that aren't quite right yet. And some of these fish can be difficult because they have sort of transparent pieces and very small little pieces like down here. And there's some things that we can do to make this a little bit easier on ourselves. So I'm going to continue to use the quick selection tool by adding things to the selection. But when I find something that shouldn't be in the selection, you recall that I can hold down, first of all, I want to make it a little smaller with the bracket keys. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I can take things away from this, the selection. And yes, you do need to be this precise. You'll be graded based on how well you do things like create these selections. This is, in very, this is very important in creating a realistic looking environment. I want to show you another tool that can help with this. And it's called the Quick Mask. It actually lives right down here. But you can access it even quicker by using the Q shortcut. And when I press Q, the Quick Mask is added to the scene. And what you have is areas that are red and areas that are normal. Areas that are normal are inside my selection. Areas that are red are not inside my selection. And I can add or subtract to the selection by adding the red or erasing the red. For example, if I take the eraser and I erase this red piece right here and turn the quick mask off, you'll see that is now part of my selection. So I'm going to undo that. On the other hand, if I grab a paintbrush let me grab a less soft brush. I'm going to reset my brushes and do a hard brush. And if I paint red here on the fish and I press Q again you'll see that that part of the fish is no longer inside my selection. So this can be a good way to fine tune some pieces that's sort of hard to get to with, with your other tools. So let's get rid of that. For example, I might scroll down here and decide that it's a little bit easier to erase. And at this point, I actually will use a soft brush to erase the pieces where I want the selection to be or to add little tiny pieces of red 
up in the difficult parts to get to to really nail that selection. All right, this is called a quick mask, and the shortcut is Q. I found an even better place to use the quick mask, and it's these uh, fins that are on the top of the fish. And you have these little areas in between each little individual fin that is really hard to get to with any other tool. So I've engaged the quick mask with the Q key, and I've selected my paintbrush, and I'm using my graphics tablet whoops, to just get in there just in between all the little grooves, short little motions, and being very precise with my selection will go a really long way to making the scene look its best. I finished my quick masking and you'll see that up in here in that fin I've got a much more precise selection than I had before. I'm going to go ahead and use this as I move forward. So I'm going to teach you about a new tool and anytime I'm using the quick mask or almost any other selection tool, I have an option up here called refine edge. And when I click that, it's going to bring up a dialog box and it's going to isolate the selection so that's all I see. I can choose how I view it. I could view it on black or on white. White usually brings it, brings it out the best and I can see how my selection looks at this moment and I can actually, as the name implies, refine it a bit. So the first thing that I typically do is I smooth the edges and you'll see you get some little jagged pieces and when I smooth the edges it's exactly what it sounds like. It takes some of those jagged pieces and just smooths them out and I can de determine the amount of smoothness that I want. Feathering is something that I don't typically do. It actually takes the selection and makes it a little fuzzy on the outside. Um, that works sometimes but I don't really like the look that it creates. I do typically add some contrast though. So if I move the contrast slider up, let me do it way up so you can see the difference. It makes those lines really crisp. So this is with no contrast. This is with a lot of contrast. So I'm going to fall somewhere in the middle there. And shift edge will actually take your selection and move it a certain amount of pixels in or out. And as I look, I see that there's sort of like an outline around my fish, uh, sort of a dark outline that's coming from the, uh, the black that the fish was on before. And I'm just going to go ahead and shift the edge. Let's try three pixels, um, three pixels in. So that'll be minus three. And you'll notice that the selection now has moved inwards. Um, and most of the time, that's fine. That's kind of what I'm looking for anyways. So I'm going to go ahead back to my refine edge. Um, everything's the way I had a second ago. But what I meant, I shouldn't have pressed enter actually. What I should have done was tell it, what do I want this to output to? It was set to output to a selection. So when I pressed enter, um, my new selection was already there. Typically what I want is I probably want a new layer. So what that'll do is it'll remove the selection from its current layer and put it by itself isolated on a new layer. So now... I have just the fish which I can move onto my background. I'm back in my background scene and we're going to go ahead and get things set up and I'm going to show you how to move the fish we just um, isolated onto this. So I'm in my background and first of all you always start off with a background layer and a background layer is locked. It's a good idea to, to let it stay that way and keep one on the bottom of your um, layer groupings just to have it there in case something goes wrong. I'm going to press Control J, and that's going to duplicate that layer. And I'm just going to call this background copy. This is the layer that I'm going to be working on mostly. So now let's bring that fish over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to arrange in, I'm going to go ahead and do two up horizontal, and you're going to see what that means. So now I have two little windows, each with a different um, different scene open, and I can drag in between them. But what I actually want is I want this one. I'm going to drag it down here. So now I can choose the background tab up here, this mullet fish tab down here, and I can drag this layer that has the isolated mullet fish and just drop it on the background. And there it is. Now, to get back to my sort of normal view, I'm going to go back to Window, 
arrange, I'm going to say consolidate all to tabs. Now they're all back in their normal tabbed arrangement. And you'll see I have a giant mullet fish on my scene now. So the first thing I'm going to do is press Control T. That's going to open up my transform tools. And I'm going to size this down a bunch. I'm going to hold down the shift key while I do. If I hold down the shift key, it's going to size itself proportionally. The length and the width will stay in their same proportion. If I don't, I run the risk of smushing it in one of the two directions, making it too narrow in either direction. So I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to make it much smaller. Oops. One more time. And I'm going to just drag it down and put it somewhere here on the scene that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and rename this layer. Oh, I always forget this. You have to press Enter to finalize your transformations. You can't do anything else until you've done that. See how everything is grayed out and nothing is available? Until I press Enter to finalize my transformations, now everything's back. So I'm going to change this layer name to mullet fish, which is apparently what that thing is. I'm also going to make a new group by clicking down here or by pressing Control G. And I'm going to call this group mullet fish. And I'm going to make sure that the mullet fish is inside of there because there's going to be several different layers that involve this mullet fish. And I'm going to have a new group for, every, for each of the fish that I add. So now that we've added our first fish to the aquarium, we're going to do a couple of fine-tune adjustments to really make it fit in with its background. And it's not too bad, but a lot of times when you add one image into another, you'll find that the colors don't really make any sense. It doesn't really look real. It just looks like you cut out and pasted a copy of the fish onto the aquarium background. So we're going to do something to sort of match the colors to help it make like it really, really fits there. So what we're going to do is, inside of our mullet fish group, on our mullet fish here, we're going to do... Uh, we're going to copy that. We're going to duplicate it by pressing Control J. And I'm going to call this mullet color match. Now, the reason why I'm going to duplicate this, so now I have two, is I'm going to work on this top layer, and anything I don't like, I can just I can always delete that layer or turn that layer off or change the opacity of that layer. So I'm not actually changing my base here. This is called non-destructive editing. If I make a bunch of changes and I don't like them, I can simply get rid of them by getting rid of this layer, and I still have my original back where it was. If I made my changes directly on this layer, other than undoing a bunch of times, which I can only do a certain number of times, I'm stuck with my changes. That's it. I have destructed. I have changed things permanently. So whenever possible, I'm going to do non-destructive editing and add layers and make my changes there so I can always change them again or get rid of them. So we have our copy and we're going to go up to image adjustments match color and we need to come down to the bottom and look for our source. Our source for the color match is the background. That's where we want to get the colors from. The layer that we want to change is the mullet color match. So now I have these two sliders. I'm going to leave fade alone. I can do that somewhere else. I'm going to do illuminance and color intensity. And if you pay close attention, as I move the sliders, you're going to see that I'm actually going to be changing the way the fish actually looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn illuminance down and the intensity up a bit. I'm going to press OK. And you're thinking, well, that looks way worse. It just looks dark now. I need to make one more change, and that's on my mullet color match layer. I need to change its blending mode, and its blending mode is how it interacts with other layers. And I'm going to change its blending mode from normal to color. And now, so this is before, this is after. And the fish now has sort of a nice blue, bluish tone to it. It took the blues from the background and put them on the fish. And that's going to help make it look more real and work even better. I might even go back into my color match 
and bring the luminance down a little bit more. And so by turning this off, I can see what I had before. I had this before, nice orangey fish, but it doesn't have any of the blue that it should have from the blue water and the blue light coming down. So I take some of the color away and I add sort of a bluish tint to it, and now it fits in much better. And this is one of the reasons why I have a whole group for mullet fish, to keep things nice and organized. So here's a draft that I was working on, and you'll see that in addition to doing the color matching so that the fish have sort of a bluish tint to them, I've also placed some of the fish behind some of the rock formations. I think this goes a long way to adding realism into the scene. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Back in our scene, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of the background, sort of a copy of a copy. And I'm going to rename that rock. I'm going to place it inside the mullet fish, <coughs> excuse me, mullet fish folder. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, using my quick select tool, the part of the rock that I want to be in front of the fish. So let's just do this one. This one works pretty well. I'm going to use my quick select tool. And I'm going to get this rock selected. I'm going to do sort of a quick, uh, quick job of it. I'm not going to spend too much time making it look exactly right. I will expect you to do a much better job taking your time. Um, I will grab all these little pieces, uh, but I will make sure, of course, that these little blue parts in the background should not be part of my selection. Only the rocks themselves. So it'll go like that, come up here, and like I said, very quick, uh, quick job, not very precise, but uh, for the point of illustration, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to refine the edge. And you'll see this is what I have selected. Uh, I should have done a better job of getting rid of that part of the ocean right there. Um, I'll go through and I'll smooth it like before. I'll add some contrast. Um, I might shift the edge in around a little bit. And I'll tell it that I want this to be a new layer. Then I'll press OK. Now what I have is a layer that just has that one piece of rock on it. Now that happens to be exactly on top of the other copies of it. But if I take it and I move it up on top of the fish layers and I take these two layers and move them, you'll see that now this rock layer that just has this piece of the rock is on top of the fish. If I were to move that, Remember, I've got to press Enter because I need to confirm my transformation. If I move that rock underneath, the fish would be back on top. And if I move this a little too far in the wrong direction, you see that it comes back, um, comes back through because I didn't include this piece of the rock in my selection. But by doing this, I've sort of added a layer of realism and 3D-ness um, that really helps sell the image as being real.